Hello, everyone. My name is Zhao He. I'm a graduate student of Beijing Wuzi University. Today, I will report a paper with the title "Research on the Impact of the Level of Investment Facilitation in the Host Country on China's OFDI," based on data from countries along the Belt and Road. This report will be divided into five parts, including paper overview, research background, research significance and current situation, research method and content, and conclusions and suggestions. The first part is an overview of the paper. This paper selects from 2010 to 2018 data from 50 countries along the Belt and Road to construct an investment facilitation indicator evaluation system, including five primary indicators and 20 secondary indicators, and use principal component analysis to determine the level of investment facilitation of countries along the road, measure and analyze its impact on China's OFDI. The results will explain what is the level of investment facilitation in 50 countries, the impact of investment facilitation, GDP, population, dependence on foreign trade, distance, and borders on OFDI in China, and what conclusions and suggestions can be gained from it. The second part is introduce the research background. Since the reform and opening up, China has promoted the going global strategy. China's OFDI has also increased substantially. In 2013, Chinese President Xi Jinping proposed to build the Silk Road Economy Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, referred to as the Belt and Road, which has aroused the resonance of many countries further expanded the level of China's opening to the outside world and accelerated the development of China's OFDI. According to the statistics of the China's Outward Direct Investment Statistical Bulletin in 2019, China's OFDI flow in 2019 was $136.91 billion, and the stock reached $2.2 trillion, ranked second and third in the global ranking of foreign direct investment flow and stocks. And the OFDI flow in 2019 has increased by 50 times compared to 2002. Among them, the direct investment flow in countries along the route in 2019 was $18.69 billion, and the stock reached $179.47 billion. China has established about 11,000 overseas companies. From the perspective of country composition, it mainly flowed to the Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, UAE, Laos, and other countries. From this, it can be seen that the Belt and Road countries have huge investment space and broad investment prospects, and will be an important strategic location for China's OFDI for a long time in the future. The third part introduces the research significance and the current situation of this paper. With the increase in trade volume, and changes in international investment rules, institutional quality, business environment, and financial openness have become important factors in attracting foreign direct investment. Therefore, it is particularly important to improve the level of investment facilitation and promote investment development. In the above context, Exploring the impact of investment facilitation in countries along the Belt and Road on China's OFDI has important theoretical and practical significance 
for promoting the smooth flow of investment along the route and China's opening to the outside world. At present, there is no unified standard for the investment facilitation evaluation system. In the construction of evaluation indicators of investment facilitation level, some scholars have spreaded trade facilitation and investment facilitation. The construction of trade facilitation is represented by Wilson, Feng Xiaoli, Li Xuan, and others. The construction of investment facilitation is by Zhang Yabin, Qiao Mingjian, and others. As the degree of trade and investment integration continues to deepen, some scholars have combined the two for comprehensive research, such as Peng Yu, Yu Shenghua, and others. Next, I will focus on introducing the research method and the content of this paper. This paper refers to the World Economic Forms Global Competitiveness Report and the World Bank's Business Environment Report, draws on Wilson's research method and combines the construction goals of the Belt and Road, based on its research as the two important investment facilitation indicators of business environment and the finance service. The investment facilitation Five primary indicators are set for the logistic and infrastructure, institutional environment, business environment, customer and border management, financial service. The first level indicators are subdivided into 20 secondary indicators. They are basically covered all the content involved in investment facilitation. In order to eliminate the problem of large value gaps, caused by different numerical source and different unions. I use following formulas to eliminate the dimension of the data. After collecting and processing the data, this paper uses principal component analysis to calculate the level of investment facilitation. Before using this method, this paper uses data 16 to perform KMO and SMC tags on data. The average KMO tax coefficient score is 0.8. In the SMC tax, the average coefficient value is 0.7. It can be seen from the tax results that the linear relationship between the secondary indicators is strong, and the selected data meets the principal component analysis tax standard. Regarding the determination of the number of Principal component. This paper extracts principal components with a cumulative contribution rate of more than 80%, which can reflect the basic information of the original data while ensuring that the indicator variables are not relevant. The number and contribution rate of principal components selected in each year are shown in this table. Then use these two formula to calculate the weight of each indicator obtain investment facilitation of countries. After calculating the level of investment facilitation, this paper divided them into four levels, very convenient, relatively convenient, generally convenient, and inconvenient. From the data in 2018, it can be seen that among the 50 countries, there are 5 very convenient countries, 8 relatively convenient countries, 19 generally convenient countries, 18 inconvenient countries, accounting for 36% of the total number of countries in the sample. It can be seen that there is still room for improvement in the level of investment facilitation in countries along the road. Based on the theory of international trade and the actual conditions of the countries along the Belt and Road, an expanded gra trade gravity model was established to analyze the main factors affecting China's OFDI in the countries along the Belt and Road. The explained variable OFDI represents the stock of China's OFDI in host country. TIF represents the level of investment facilitation 
GDP represents the gross domestic product of host country. POP represents the population size of host country. DIS is the distance, distance cost between China and the host country. Open is the foreign trade dependence of the host country. Border is the dummy variable, which means that when the two countries have a common border, it is set to 1. Otherwise, it is set to 0. This table shows the result of regressions using ORS, fixed effect, and random effect. It can be seen that for every 1% increase in investment facilitation, OFDI will rise by 3.1%, and this is significant at the 1% level, indicating that the degree of investment facilitation has significantly promoted China's OFDI. The host country's GDP, population, foreign trade openings, common border rate, and OFDI are positively correlated. Distance and OFDI are negatively correlated, indicating that the further the distance, the fewer OFDI activities in China. Next, I replace the investment facilitation indicators with five first-level indicators for ORS and fixed effect regression. It can be found that the impact of variable indicators shows significant difference. Among them, the business environment has the greatest impact. The second is the institutional environment indicator. The regression results of logistic and infrastructure, customer and border management, and the financial service indicators are not significant. The results of the control variables are consistent with the previous results. According to the official website of China's The Belt and Road, the countries along the route are divided into five regions, Northeast Asian, ASEAN, West Asian and North Africa, Central and South Asia, Central and Eastern Europe, to examine the impact of investment facilitation in different regions on China's OFDI. According to the results, it can be seen that foreign direct investment in Central and Eastern Europe is most affected by the host country's investment facilitation. Second is Northeast Asian, third is West Asian, and North Africa. The last one is Central and South Asian. The result in ASEAN region is not significant. In summary, this research draws three conclusions. First, there are significant differences in the degree of investment facilitation among countries along the Belt and Road. Second, the degree of investment facilitation, GDP, population, and common borders have significantly promoted China's OFDI. Distance has shown a significant negative effect. The degree of dependence on foreign trade has little effect on China's OFDI. Third, business environment contributed the most to China's OFDI growth, followed by the institutional environment, logistics and infrastructure, customer and border management, and financial service indicator. Based on the conclusion, the policy implications contained in this paper are as follows. First, countries with different levels of investment facilitation should adopt different foreign direct investment strategies. Second, companies should pay attention to the host country's institutional environment and the business environment when choosing OFDI locations. Third, while China is strengthening its own logistic and infrastructure construction. It also leads the construction in countries along the route as the major country, promotes the construction of arterial trade roads and major ports, so that the countries along the route will form the interconnected logistics networks and enhance the hard power to promote bilateral investment. This is my presentation of this paper. Thanks for your listening.